Next up, let's talk about variables. So far, we've seen how to write numbers and simple mathematical expressions, but we're not capturing any information. We're not able to recall any values. It's just basically a calculator, a nice JavaScript calculator. But when we add variables in, we now can keep track of values and recall them or update them whenever we want. So variables are like labeled jars, as you can see by this diagram on the right-hand side, where we have a value and it goes into a sort of a container that has a label on it. So in this case, we're saying age is 72, the number 72. So we can store a value, we give it a name so that we can recall it later, we could use it, we can pass it to something, we can change it, we can do all sorts of things. So very, very important concept in programming. We make variables all the time. So the basic syntax that we'll see first is using a keyword called let. Now there actually are two different ways that we can create variables in JavaScript, at least two that are commonly used today. There's another option, which we'll talk about in a separate video coming up. So for now, we're talking about let and const. First up, let. So let is the keyword we start with, and then a variable name. Some name is what I'm calling it here. It could equal, or it could be anything you want. It could be my variable. It could be stupid variable. It could be chicken eggs. There are a couple of conventions that we'll talk about in a moment. And then we have an equal sign and then a value. So to recreate what we have here, we would write let age equals 72. Let age equals 72. Now we have a value called age. And at any point, I can recall it just like that. We usually don't just recall age for no reason. We usually do something with it. Here's a simple example. We have two variables, hens, which is four, and roosters, which is two. We can add them together, hens plus roosters. So not only are we saving a value that we can recall later, we're also giving it a nice name, a way of understanding what it is. We can see clearly we are adding hens to roosters. We're trying to calculate total number of chickens versus just adding four plus two. It's not as easy to tell what's going on. But the main value here, the main reason for variables is that we are storing information so that we can recall it and use it later. So we can recall them, but of course we can also update them. So here I have hens, which I'm initializing to four. And a raccoon killed one of my hens, very, very sad. For those of you who don't know, raccoons, while adorable, are quite vicious towards lots of animals, but especially chickens. I could do something like hens minus one, which you might think would change the value of hens, but it's not actually doing that at all. Here I have my age variable, which is 72. If I do age plus one, let's say that this person had a birthday, their age should now be 73. I'm not actually changing the value. All that I'm doing is saying, hey, JavaScript, give me that value for age and then add one to it. But I'm not telling it to update age. So the easiest way or the first way to change it is to set hens or age equal to the variable current value plus or minus or whatever we're trying to do. We change it based off of the current value. So for example, age equals age plus one. Now we have 73 in age, as you can see there. We can do it again. If I recall it with the up arrows, I'm adding one. Let's uh, add a whole decade. Now, if we look at age, it's 84. So that's one way of updating a variable. And we can multiply, divide. We could do whatever we want. We could also just completely change it. I could say age is actually now 18. This person was reincarnated as a teenager. Actually, is 18 considered a teenager? I don't know, adult. Anyway, we've now set it to 18. Now, there are a couple things to know about variables. The first is that you can't technically name your variables anything. For example, you couldn't name a variable let. Let let equals 10. JavaScript will get very confused because let is a reserved word. It's a keyword in the language of JavaScript. So it thinks that we're trying to make another variable here. And you can see let is disallowed as a lexically bound name. So that doesn't work. There are other things you'll encounter, definitely. In JavaScript, there's something called the document. The document is a special object. We haven't talked about objects, but it's something that exists in your browser. And so if you tried to make a variable called document, let document equals 15, identifier document has already been declared. So there are some things you'll need to look out for, but for the most part, you can name your variables anything. 
That doesn't mean you should. There are some things you should be aware of or that you should keep in mind. First of all, you want to give your variable a name that makes sense. So you don't want to do let x equals 18 when in reality this is a value for age. Or you wouldn't want to do let z equals 5 if this was a 5 star rating. Why not call it rating or score or something like that? So naming is very, very important. And along with that, there's a convention in JavaScript where we name our variables using camel case. Camel case just means that when you have multiple words, multiple pieces in a variable name, like num of hens, you capitalize the first letter of each new word, except for the first one, at least in JavaScript. So this is camel case, except for the first letter. We don't want to have an uppercase first letter. It won't break things. You can do this. Num of hens equals six. I think I had four earlier. Now we have six. Some of the eggs hatched. This works, but the convention, the pattern that developers follow in JavaScript, that companies want you to follow, that style guides want you to follow, is to lowercase the first letter and then uppercase the first letter of every other word after that. So let average rating equal, let's go with, 9.7 okay so that's one thing to keep in mind you don't want to do average dash rating we don't want snake case where you use underscores and you don't want to just let it bleed together like this if those are actual separate words it's much easier to read if you have camel casing lastly uh, if you try and redeclare a variable that you've already made like what I just do average rating if I wanted to make another average rating and I want to set it to zero this time. Nope, not going to happen with let. JavaScript tells me identifier average rating has already been declared. So if we create a variable with a given name using let, we cannot then redeclare it. We cannot make a new variable with the same name using let. We can only have one of those in a given scope, which we haven't talked about scope, so don't worry about it. We'll return to it. But you can see the problem, right? We already have average rating. We've made space for it in memory. JavaScript is like, okay, there's one thing called average rating. You try and make another, it's not going to be happy with you. And you get this error. 